Good day, folks. Welcome to our Aussie homestead. It has been a hot week, part way up the coast in Queensland, and I've also not been feeling my best. So I've spent a lot of time inside while Ross has continued to work outside trying to find a little bit of flat land for our home to be built on. So. We're gonna get started today. I've decided we're having pizza for dinner tonight. I love making my own crust. Ross and I prefer it over any sort of bought pizza. I've been making my own pizza dough for a very long time. Mom taught both Lisa and I how to do that when we were young children. Follow along while we do this. The recipe will be posted in the description part of this video. Let's get going, shall we? We start out with one cup of warm water. It's a little warm. <clears throat> A cup of warm water, you don't want it too hot, it'll kill the yeast pretty much immediately. Then we need two teaspoons of yeast. This is the yeast that I buy at Woolies. Then we need a teaspoon of flour. So this, once again, plain flour. About a teaspoon goes in there, then a tablespoon of sugar. All right. So that's everything in my measuring cup. It's a cup of water, two teaspoons of yeast, teaspoon of flour, and a tablespoon of sugar. Mix the whole thing together. And then you just want to put it in a warm place. My warm place here in Australia is most definitely the back window of our RV. So much sun comes into that in the afternoon. So it's currently three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm gonna put that on my back window for five to 10 minutes and it will rise so quickly. In Canada, you had to heat the oven up a little wee bit, turn it off, put it in, and that's where it would rise. This is my yeast on my windowsill. It is 3.09. We shall see what it looks like in five minutes. That's the five minute mark. So it has started to rise. As you can see there, there's a little bit of foam on the top. We're gonna let it go for another five and see where we get. All right, so that is 10 minutes. I see bubbles on the top that are now starting to pop. So because of that, I am going to call it done. I don't want it to rise and then it dies and then it just falls down. So we're gonna call that done and come back to the counter and knead our dough. In our bowl, I have found with this recipe, about two and a quarter cups of flour works. And then I put flour on the surface to knead it. And so then if I need more, I can add more at that point in time. Two cups of flour. When it comes to flour, I don't like it to be compacted down the way that it comes in the bag and I don't have a sifter. So I always sort of scoop the flour in the bag and then dump it and scoop and dump just to add some air to it and fluff it up a little bit. There's one cup. All right, so there's two. And then in all honesty, with the quarter cup, I eyeball it because I'm just gonna put more on the counter anyway. So, and some, two and some. The recipe I was looking at calls for a tablespoon of sea salt flakes. I cannot even begin to imagine what this, how salty this recipe would be with a tablespoon of sea salt flakes. So I just have Himalayan pink sea salt. I don't use it anywhere close to that. Honestly, if that's a quarter of a teaspoon, you'd be lucky. That might even not even be an eighth of a teaspoon. If I want it saltier, I'll add it on with my pepperoni or my ham or whatever sauce I'm using. I don't need my dough to be extra salty. So that's just salt and flour. You make a well in the middle. So just make a hole, make a hole in the middle. And that's where the yeast is going. In my bowl here. I've just put the yeast in the middle of, here's some flour around the outside. Yeast is in the middle. I'm just gonna slowly stir the flour and salt and yeast together. Mm 
there we have the dough is starting to get firm. So the purpose of this video, I will need this on my counter so that you can see what I'm doing. But this bowl is big enough and it keeps the dough in one place. So I do like to just knead the dough, dough, knead the dough in the bowl. Tongue twister of the day. All right, we're gonna do this on the counter so you can see what I'm doing. A tablespoon. You're supposed to use a tablespoon. I do a half and a half. As you need flour, as you need flour, <laughs> just sprinkle it on the board. All right, kneading. Fold over and push. Fold over and push. It does get sticky, like it's starting to stick to me now, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour to the work surface or to the ball so that I don't stick to my dough and my dough doesn't stick to me. All right, another half a tablespoon. Another half a tablespoon of oil. We'll knead that in. And if it ends up on the counter, it ends up on the counter and it will just get kneaded in over time. It's nice and smooth now. Some sort of oil is definitely needed, whether it be the butter that we used to use or the olive oil that we're using now. Definitely helps make it more elastic. You can tell the difference immediately. All right, nice little ball of dough here. For one pizza for my husband and I, for Ross and I, one pizza is gonna go on this cute little pan, bought it at Kmart, it's the perfect size for the oven. I only need half this ball of dough. I'm gonna put the other half in the fridge. If you put it in the fridge right now, it stops it from rising, which is fine. You don't want it rising right now, it doesn't need to. When I'm gonna use the second ball of dough, I will take it out of the fridge a few hours before I actually wanna use it and actually take it out of this container so that then it can rise, it can get warm. Once it's warm, it's more malleable on the pan, much easier to spread around. So I'm going to cut this guy in half. I'm going to knead this into a nice ball. Put him in here. I put this on and then snap it so that, that way it really seals it in. I've not had them. This will rise a little wee bit, but not much. While it's in the fridge, I have no idea how many days it keeps for. I would use it within a week though. We'll end up having either pizza or calzones. We'll have pizza tonight and then Call them panzerottis, call them calzones. We'll have them in a couple of nights. My dough will be used within a couple of days. This one here is the one we're gonna use tonight. I'm gonna put him back in his bowl. It says plastic wrap, in all honesty, tea towel, bowl, warm, sunny spot. Back onto my windowsill. Um, and that's where it'll sit for the next hour. It'll do its rising, and then I'll grease this. I always use butter or margarine to grease this pan. And I will slowly push my dough out onto this pan, which I'll show you in an hour and a bit when I do it. All right, kitchen's all cleaned up while the dough is rising, and we're gonna go outside now. We're gonna go check on Ross and see what he's up to. Let's go. This is always the case. I can hear the excavator. I have to find the excavator. There's trails that go everywhere now because the excavator can make these great big paths. <laughs> And I have to follow them along and see if I can find him. So we're off on a hunt. All right. All right, I found him. He was heading towards a certain tree. And I have found him and that tree. Now to go and see if he's made it to it. He's definitely made a mess. <laughs> Which is always what the two of us do. We make a mess. Let me go back along. I'm gonna take all of our piles to the burning pile. Well, he got to the tree because it was that tree there and its trunk is back in there. 
So he's definitely made it. And the land is still flat, which is what we were hoping for. So we found Ross, but I forgot to bring him his cherry ripe. So we'll go back to the RV now and get him his chocolate bar. We are first going to put the dough on the pan. It is 5.20, which is about an hour and a half after we made the dough. Um, it has risen that much in the pan. I would say it's about at least doubled, if not tripled in size, probably tripled in size. <clears throat> I've just got bread. I'm going to grease the bottom of the pan. Make sure you have the size as well. Okay, so as you take the dough out of the bowl, it will fall. All the air bubbles will break, <clears throat> but that's okay. I'm a firm believer in pushing out dough and then letting it relax. It's like a muscle that's tight. You have to massage it, let it loosen, and then let it relax. It'll stay loose. Pizza does the same way. You have to push it out, then you have to let it relax. And it will squish in a little bit, but then it'll be relaxed and you can push it out a little bit more. Once you've let it relax a bit, it's so much easier to continue pushing out. Rather than doing pizza sauce, we much prefer a white carbonara. So that's what I use for pizza sauce. For toppings, we like bacon, chicken, mushrooms. Those are our three definites. And then, depending on what we have around, we also have artichokes, sun-dried tomatoes, and green olives, and then of course cheese definitely cheese. I will get to the point where we make our own mozzarella cheese. I have to look for the ingredients here though. Now that's ready for the oven. In an oven that has Fahrenheit and Celsius on it, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. 12 minutes on the middle rack and then drop it down for another 10, just so at the bottom of it would cook up nicely. So yeah, it's all ready to go when we're ready to have our dinner. Thanks for coming along this week. Pizza crusts really are quite easy to make and happily don't take very many ingredients. Please let us know below if you have tried your own pizza crust or if this has prompted you to try your hand at it. We'd also love to know what are your favorite ingredients on a pizza? What do you just always have to have or absolutely never want to see on a pizza? Mine personally is pineapple. Please don't ever put pineapple on my pizza. Although I know that it, people love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just not me. Thank you ever so much for watching and subscribing. We appreciate every single one of you and we hope that you have a great week. Enjoy, happy cooking, and we will continue clearing. We'll see you later. Cheers. <laughs>